Yep. Yo, what's good? Getting started here with Live. the stream with my boy Sandfall. How you doing, man? Doing good. How about you? Doing pretty good. Chilling. Make sure the audio levels are all nice. Good. Lower that a little bit. And we should be good to go. What's up, Phantom Saber? Yeah, this is uh, this is exactly why I told you about the stream specifically. Uh, both uh, you and uh, Sandfall have been struggling with the same thing, which is transitioning to Ultimate Shulk. How you doing, Ninko? So, uh, this uh, lesson, just uh, getting everything uh, going on. Um, Sandfall uh, offered to uh, donate twenty dollars for the uh, the compendium uh, fundraiser that I'm doing here on the stream. So, I uh, thank you very much for that, man. I am offering uh, incentives if you type exclamation point incentives in the chat. Just gotta get all the uh, <laughs> all of that stuff aired out before anything else. After the stream, I gotta do a doodle for T Rex because uh, he paid five bucks last time. But yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and go right into it. So since this is a Shulk lesson, I'm going to be playing Shulk. All right. Oh shoot! I chose the same color. Thing. No worries. <laughs> one of us gets to be a little darker than the other one. So let's uh, I'm, I'm, let's do one match just all out right now, so I can kind of see where you are. Okay. Okay, so you got the most important part down, which is snapping the damn ledge. <laughs> A little bit of lag between us, but it should be okay. Snapping the damn ledge. <laughs> Don't make me praise you and then take it away, man. Come on. <laughs> I you were like, kind of... This is a mistake on my part. Not quite at that percent yet. So far, from what I'm noticing, your decision making is uh, solid as far as Smash 4 Shulk is concerned. You're not making like any overtly unsafe decisions, and you're trying to implement some of the new stuff. But there's some stuff that like you're just not utilizing quite yet, and we'll definitely talk about those after this match. All right.
mistakes were made. Snare still good. This means one of you gets a nice 10. Exactly. I do know right now the first thing I need to focus on before anything else is just learning how to space and land attacks well, then I can move on to other things. Yeah, just get in the lab and uh, practice that. So, Sandfell, thankfully, you are beyond that step from what I'm seeing. Um, mostly from what I'm seeing, it's just. Uh, hold on, let me lower my volume. This music's a little loud in my ears. Okay. Okay, so the main things that I'm seeing from the way that you're playing is. Um, there's. It's just a lack of awareness of some options that uh, you could be utilizing a little bit more. Um, for the most part, I feel like your game plan is more or less solid. It's just in some areas you're playing a little scared, like uh, um, using a safe landing attack and throwing your shield. But then in other areas you're playing a little reckless because it seems that it'd be safe, but it's not. Like doing advancing forward airs. Um, so we'll definitely uh, try to come up with some alternatives here and there and add in some uh, okay. some other things that you're definitely not utilizing. I'm going to change the oh, yeah. skin color actually. Alright, in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and write some, some, some notes. Let's see. But yeah, no, playing scared is kind of like a problem I also kind of more or less had in Smash 4, but like it wasn't as big of a problem in Smash 4 because you had to be more safe. Let me, uh, let me raise your volume a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, that should be a bit better. So... Okay, so the big two things that I think... Uh, the big three things, let's say. Just real quick, you know, some of this stuff down here. Okay. So, some of the big things that I think you need to utilize a little bit more. I noticed you're trying to throw out a few more down airs, which is good in some situations, but you absolutely need to make sure they're short hop. Otherwise, you're going to be like so far in the sky that that downer is going nowhere unless you're reading a jump. Uh, and it's yeah. very risky. That's the problem. Because like, if you do throw it out, it's a kind of a high risk option. But the air time that you have and the landing lag, which is more than any other aerial that you have, is it well more than enough time for your opponent to react to what you're doing. If you pressure you someone's shield with down air, it's effective. But otherwise, no. Should it be like buffered short hop and then fastball the back of the second hit, or? Uh... I prefer um, like short hop down C stick. Okay, so just then quick. Okay. It does take a little bit of practice because if you do it too, if you do it too slowly, then the attack's not gonna. Then you come get out. that. But if you're in speed art, you could just buffer the short hop and it'll come out almost perfectly. Oh, I didn't know you could do that in speed. I thought that was more fun. Oops. Exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, things to talk about. Um, rounded movement is one of the biggest, biggest things in this game that is different compared to uh, Choke in the past. Yeah. So, um, dash attack is now a viable neutral option. 
Yeah, I know. I just I need to implement that. It's just so hard. It can't get rid of the no use dash attack mentality. So dash attack Not in this game works a little bit differently than it did in Smash. Um, depending on the art you're in, it goes farther. So speed art goes oh, farthest. Yeah, uh, vanilla oh, is wow. decent. When you're in shield art, it goes nowhere. Yeah, it was fixed distance in Smash Bros, right? Mm -hmm. And that fixed distance was beautiful. Because For shield. Use it in shield, yeah. Uh, in this game, not not as much. If you're in speed, you reach a little bit farther. So those times that you're doing stuff like uh, like advancing forward is to try to catch people out, not so safe. But if you throw out a uh, advance, uh, rush in down tilt, like an instant dash attack. Or a rush, yeah, like down tilt is safe on shield because it auto spaces. People can't really grab you. Out of shield, if you yeah. down tilt. But beyond that, um, dash attack is a nice way to catch people out. It still has the same use that it did in Smash 4, even if it's not as strong. Smash Art is just as strong, so around the same percent it killed in Smash 4, it will kill in this game. It's the Smash Art. Okay. So, uh, beyond that, rounded movement. We no longer have perfect pivots, so we gotta find other ways to move around. And I actually never learned to perfect pivot in Smash Bros. Well, good. Congratulations. <laughs> um, it paid off. But, okay. PM. Let's talk about PM. Because oh, you, right. you were one of the devs for PM, right? You gotta keep it a secret. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. Okay. So, um, dash, uh, dash dancing. Do you, you, uh, do you remember what that was? used for um basically to get into your opponent's threat zone weave in and out of your opponent's threat zone so they don't know exactly what you're going to do exactly so what you what you got to do in this game is kind of sort of the same thing even if we can't dash dance the same way that we can do in uh in melee or pm there's still some options that we have at our disposal like we have uh the extended dash dance we have the actual dash dance that goes nowhere which can be used as a to mix in with the extended dash dance because like you know when people dash dance they often do this kind of thing anyways even in melee yeah like they mix in short ones with uh with long ones and it's kind of the same thing so, here yeah uh, another confession i actually never dash dance or really dash dance, uh, in the uh, in pm i was kind of carried by a 3.02 well <laughs> so. now now is when you're going to learn i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. teach you when to dash dance you can learn how to dash dance on your own time. But knowing okay. when to do it is the important part. So you already know it's to poke in and out of your opponent's uh, threat zone. You're, they're on reactable zone, so they feel like swinging and then you miss, right? So yeah. one thing that I've been liking to do in this game a lot is uh, walking forward. Because when you walk forward, you can throw out your shield instantly. And dash back. And what's, what's good about dashing back here is that commitment of displacing your position is being used in a in a direction that is not going to leave you threatened. So I'm committing backwards. I'm not committing forward. Yeah, and when it's when my opponent uh, starts to like catch on to these reactions, like these options that I go for, at this point, if they're reacting to the options that I pick, then I can throw them off by switching up the options. For example, what if instead of like I walk forward and then do that. So, walk. Well, yeah. It's like, normally I'm doing this. Like, walk forward, poking their bubble, dash back. If they swing, then I come back in and I punish them. With whatever. A grab or a dash attack. Uh, even, like, a nair if it's laggy enough. You know, things like that. Or maybe forward tilt. Or my other favorite is very safe. If you want to be safe, you want to be smart, you don't want to be stupid. Down tilt. Down tilt doesn't give you anything directly, but it kind of throws the opponent off. So like, it, let's say uh, re if I reset your percent here, at lower percent, even though I don't get much in the way of combos, there's still some mix-ups that I can get from this down tilt. Like, for example, down tilt dash attack. And if they jump, they might lose their jump if I'm fast enough, or otherwise, if they jump, they have to give up position. And giving up position, this puts them in disadvantage, and now you're off stage without jump. Oh jeez, I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So down tilt is useful, even though you don't get much reward off of it. 
Okay. Um, beyond that, it puts it, it just puts them in a very awkward angle where they have to reposition themselves. You remember uh, dealing with needles at high percent against Sheik? Yeah, you basically have to like be really. You have to like go to ledge or go to a platform and pray that Sheik doesn't follow you. It's exactly the same way with uh, with down tilt with Shulk. Okay. It's the same kind of mindset you need to have. So basically, like. Uh... And same thing with dash attack too. Dash attack gives you the same thing. Except uh, down tilt's a little safer, and it's easier to work with. I'm I'm still sorry. I'm still not seeing like the comparison between that and sheet needles. Like I know. Like... Well, sheet needles do it from across the stage. They catch your landing okay. and all this stuff. I'm talking about the follow ups. Oh, basically just use it to catch someone's landing. Yeah, la not using it to catch someone's landing. That's that's how you use sheet needles. I'm talking about the the reward is like sheet needles. Oh, needle. okay. So, uh, knock them in the tumble. Yeah, because like Shake Needle, they did like 1%. Okay. It's whatever. But when you're at like 110%, you got hit by a needle, you got propped up in the air, you had to find a way back to the ground. Okay, sorry. I, I spaced out there. That, that makes sense. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. So, um, beyond that, let's see. Reverse Snare is a completely different option than it was in Smash 4. Exactly that. Like, the, the amount of time that it stays out is insane. Like, stay on the ground real quick. Just so I can demonstrate to the audience at home. That's insane. Yeah. So, reverse snare. Approaching reverse snare is... It was already a decent option in Smash 4. Now it's an even better one. Very good disruption. Very safe on shield. You know, you, you're, getting a, you're getting the hit almost right when you're going to land on the opponent. So that's going to be the, the minus uh, the minus two land, uh, on shield. The, the six frames of landing lag. So even if you whiff, that's when you pull out the shield. And I saw you were doing a lot of that. You were like throwing out a, a relatively safe aerial, and then you would shield. And that's good. That's good. Just don't do it too much. Don't get too predictable. You want to mix up your defensive options. So like... Uh, yeah. You throw out, like, let's say a retreating fair. Shout out to Ben. Um, <laughs> throw out a retreating fair, shield. That's an option. Uh, throw out retreating fair, you see the opponent approach, spot dodge. Throw a retreating fair, jump away. Uh, maybe you throw the retreating fair and go to ledge, you know? Like, there's options. And okay. maybe even throw the retreating fair and, like, down tilt to stuff someone's approach. This was a, this is actually a very powerful option that uh, I know Nico used to do this a lot, would be he would like space back airs, and then when someone tries to approach, he turns around and down tilts. And he would do this whether or not they approach. And they would simultaneously discourage approaches and uh, catch people who were a little bit too slow at approaching. Okay. That's nice. Uh, beyond that, um, let's see. So, we talked about grounded movement. Yeah, Nair is so good. Okay, let me read the chat a little bit. I don't want to do with people doing that. Okay. So, um... In terms of uh, that spacing game that I was talking about. So, walk forward on the ground. And you can jump backwards in the air, spacing people out. So you can, like, for example, at a distance, you can do that in order to uh, get in a uh, more aggressive, no, more threatening approach with that run-up. Because a run-up is scarier than a walk-up. You can, it's harder to react to. So you can, like, do that and jump out of shield, and uh, you'll get full momentum with that dash back. And even, you don't even oh, have to swing. Okay. You don't even have to swing. So so run up, shield, then jump back. Yeah, but it's it's not that simple. Uh, the idea is you run up, shield, release shield, and during shield drop, you you press backwards. If you press okay. backwards while jump, no, while shielding, you will roll. So if you try to okay. do this with full momentum, you'll often roll by accident. So what you do is you drop shield. And it's completely safe, even though it seems like, yeah, you're dropping shield, but those are parry frames. Okay. So the parry frames are covering your retreat. And you get the full momentum back. And you can do whatever you want with this full momentum. You, you remember like MKLeo in his early days in Smash 4. Uh, he would just like jump backwards and he would like 
catch a whiff was like dash grab afterwards. Or he would like swing when people tried to approach as like a nair with Marth. Okay. Actually, that's actually something I never did in Smash 4. That was the same, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I never did the full momentum thing. I would always uh, kind of like just. Uh, kind of just. And yeah, do this. Whole, you can, like, you can yeah. use the fist for reactions. Like, if you're fighting a passive opponent, this kind of like pokes their bubble and makes them want to swing and you gain information from doing this while keeping safe. You're not going to directly get many punishes unless someone overextends to try to hit you here, but it's an option that you can use to try to uh, gain information or gain stage control because if you retreat and they retreat, then you move forward and you gain information. Uh, if you retreat and they follow and you swing at them, they get knocked back and you move forward. Even though you don't get advantage, you get stage control, and that leads to an advantage, because it's, it's a slight advantage. It's not like a full-blown full, on, bl full blown advantage state, but they're at ledge now, and you're Shulk. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, hold, holding shield. Like, holding like shield and smash art. Almost. But even then, uh, one thing that I've been really loving to do when ledge trapping a Shulk is, since Fair now has the not only does it swing really far below stage and covers uh like people trying to get behind you because that that reverse hit is now a front hit yeah um it's it has relatively low landing like only 10 frames of landing like it's what we had in with nair in smash 4 and we could cover ledge very easily with that 10 frames of landing like so what i do a lot is if i anticipate that they're going to do an immediate ledge option i'll often just like swing and then I'll retreat, and long like I will get back on stage. Now I'll, I will stay in position. If I'm not sure what they're going to do, I move back to center stage because no matter what happens, they are going to be closer to the ledge than I am, which means I have uh, more control of the stage than they do. Okay. So um... like if they jump above me, then I can swing like that, and I move to center stage. I land on center stage. I'm perfectly safe. Uh, and whatever, we end up playing neutral, except I have a slight leap. Um, if they are at the ledge, and I think they're going to swing immediately, I might do that. I might, like, swing like that, and then, like, bait whatever option they do. And if yeah, I don't want to anticipate, then I could just stay here and just play grounded. And then, like, here, you know, someone does a ledge option, and I can, like, jump back and swing. Or I can, like, hold shield and do something out of shield. You know, things like that. Down to it's a very safe tool, but it only catches grounded options, and it might not work too well against roll, which is why I prefer something like this. Especially once they get high enough percent, and fair will kill. You just use a jump, you're dead. <laughs> you know? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, in your so opinion, good. what are the most Shulk's most powerful options at ledge without smash hard? Shulk's most powerful options at ledge, I would say, uh, reverse nair. Okay. Reverse Nair and Fair are two of the most potent options you have. And honestly, just the most effective options, I would say, involve uh, playing reactively and just yeah. seeing what they do and just sticking to that. I prefer staying past roll distance, so that no matter what happens, they will stay behind you. And if you do react to them doing neutral getup, you can usually catch it with a dash grab. Okay. Um, it's a little harder on stages like this, by the way, with the platform right here, uh, like battlefield, etc. Because if you like full hop and try to retreat with a with a forwarder to catch something, you might inadvertently land on the platform. Is there so, a way to to cover below ledge, like a, a ledge hang uh, while retreating, or is there? Is while retreating, I mean, fair oh, covers good, that. Um, you can do that. That's reactable, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Reactable. It's risky. I I wouldn't recommend it too much. Uh, on some characters, you can down tilt the ledge. Especially yeah, if you space I it perfectly. Need to do. I need to get like a uh, I prefer to go for like baiting it. So like sometimes I'll like throw out a, a fair like that. I don't like to do it too much because they can react to when I do it and uh, kind of go for that. But I hear that this can scoop. I hear, yeah, I hear this can scoop. It's like, if it's instant fast fall, it's unreactable. Let, let's try that right now. There we go. So, like, I'm on Legend Speed Art. What? How do you react That's to that? actually nuts. You can. 
And then, like, you follow that up with a... That's... Yeah. I need to practice that, damn. I need to make, like, a custom stage that makes a spawn. So it's a good practice. Yeah. I wonder if someone's made that already. And if you miss, who cares? It's Nair. That's the bit. It's <laughs> Nair. Exactly. Like, at higher percent, like, like, you can, like, uh... You can follow up with a fair as well. Like, a drop zone fair. That's a true combo, isn't it? I think so, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty nuts. I need to practice that one. And like at higher percents, you turn on Buster, obviously put him at ledge, and then you know if uh, if the opportunity presents itself, then you get uh, you get him with some good stuff, and if it doesn't, then you get percent, and then eventually you get the grab, down throw, turn off Buster, up B, and you die. Yeah, or even I need at higher percent. Down throw fair. So I actually have a question of buffer deactivation in this game. Sure. So what's the like is buffer deactivation easier or harder in this game? Easier. And like is there much easier. different inputs? No, it's the same inputs, but it's much easier. You have a lot more uh, a lot more time to input it. How big of a like a window do we have? Like do like in, I know in Smash 4, like if you tried to like buffer like a, a forward smash or something afterwards and you did it before the buffer deactivation and you weren't frame perfect or whatever, it would override the buffer deactivation. Uh, yeah, uh, that's because you would buffer the, uh, the the forward smash input with, with AB smash. Um, if the way it works is, in order to do buffer deactivation, you need a window of idle. So, like, for example, if you uh, if, like, you can't like down tilt into forward smash with buffer deactivation, but you can down tilt. Um, you can like down tilt dash forward forward smash. Oh, okay. Because you, you need a so, window where you, you could actually act. If you buffer inputs, you're not going to get it. So like down tilt and then like that, something like that, right? Yeah, it, you absolutely need to practice it though because um, if you're slightly too late, there will be a better air dodge. Okay. And um, so so yeah, it basically works the same way. It's like you can still override the reactor to try to buffer another option. Yeah. Uh, if if you don't give the buffer deactivation a chance to breathe, then it's not gonna happen. But it is the same kind of thing where um, let's see, you have a much larger window to do it. So like for example, uh, in Smash Four, you had to do it at the end, right? Yeah. BBB. It turned off. Way after I pressed it. Okay. So it's so oh, much yeah. easier. You could do it oh, okay. super so you early, could do it like way earlier on, and then just focused on moving after, and then exactly. Right after. Oh, so you don't have to like do like have crazy hands like you did in Smash Four, where you had to do BBB and then immediately do the F Smash. It. Yeah, no, you don't, you don't need crazy hands anymore. It's free. Okay, good. That's good. So beyond that. So we talked about, uh, let's see, fair ledge trap, uh, safe aerials into defensive option. We talked, we talked, your friend talked to you a little bit about that. Let's talk about a BF yeah. shell because your friend, uh, mentioned it. So, I mean, it's easy enough to perform, it takes some practice, like there's times that you're not going to get it right. Um, I will tell you one thing to look out for. If you're holding up and you try to no in this game instead of the other games where you would like jump and press it you don't need to do that anymore you can just press up and down. uh jump and press I it i still jump and press it uh i need to honestly it's not a bad idea to jump and press it it's just sometimes you'll accidentally jump when you don't want to sometimes you know what that's better than the alternative which is not doing it at all so okay what i can say about this is if you do decide to up and b if you press up and then B, it's not going to work. You have to press it at the same time. And if it yeah, does not go through, my favorite tech. if it does not go through because um, because like you got locked in hit stun or something in hit lag or something like that, then you have to let go of up and press it again. Yeah, that's why I do the jump one and then just like spam uh, jump and then B. Yeah, uh, that's that's definitely up. more consistent. Um, in order to know when you can use it. You gotta look into frame advantage. Yeah. You have to know the numbers. 
Like, there's no other way. You have to study it. If there's a problem match for you, study the numbers. Uh, yeah. UltimateFrameData.com. It's got all the numbers. It'll tell you how oh, safe yeah. things are on Shield. I forgot that's a new website because Kurgan Hammer for some reason still isn't finished. So. Yeah. Is he hasn't been uh, doing it like it's his job anymore. And I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I'm surprised he's not. He hasn't taken like info from other sites though. Yeah, that that's one thing that's kind of weird. Like, I wish we just do that. So it's all of them. Okay. So, what else? What else? So we talked about this. Um, you know, uh, jump art now has more gravity, right? So it doesn't go as high with jump Yeah. Wait, you speed art? You mean? Yeah, speed art. That's what I meant. Yeah, I keep sometimes dying to that. Mm-hmm. It's painful. It's it. very painful. Um. With speed art, should I just like immediately up these? Like immediately do the second swing? Like, no. With other arts, I... No. Okay. This is still the same thing where you want to slightly delay it. It's just don't delay it as much. Immediate okay, so up B doesn't delayed, go nearly as high. Slightly delayed, but max delay makes you a lower, right? Yeah. Okay. And, like, of course, you know, the slight delay to recover more horizontally. You, you, you played good. You played yeah, good yeah, in Smash yeah. 4. You, you, you got all that stuff. Um, so let's talk about specific stuff to, uh, to ultimate. Combo pads. There's some combo pads in this game that weren't available to us before. One example is forward air. Forward air is now a combo tool. Okay. So, that's a combo. Uh, Wait, really? Yes, that's also a combo. Wait, like they can't break out of that They at can't all. break out of that. True, true combo. Okay. Especially like if you're in, you're in Buster, that's a combo. Or grabbing them is a combo, and you you already know what you get off a Buster grab. You could also yeah. at, like these mid percents, you can like do that to forward smash, and it's a combo. Like I did not know that. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. I'm actually uh, I'm gonna post a chart here. That's uh, one of the Shulk resources. It's um in. Have you guys seen the uh, the Shulk resource uh, table of contents that I made? I have not. Okay, well, I'm gonna post it here in the chat uh, and send it to you directly, so you can uh, take a look. It's got all a bunch of guides, a bunch of uh, resources and things like that, so you guys can uh, make use of that on your own time. Um, one of the things that I want to direct your attention to in this guide, I'm gonna actually put it up on the stream right now, so you guys can kind of follow along. Uh, Here it is. Switch analysis. I'll bring that up here. Pull that up. And click on the link. So, down here we got this chart called the Combo Optimization Chart. Not exactly okay. done right now, but it's close enough. It's got a lot of useful info. Uh, this is a chart that I made as a vague general guide to uh, kind of like map out Shulk's combo pads on like the majority of the cast. Uh, not like individual character specific stuff, but like, you know, the fundamental stuff. And okay. if you scroll, if you go to forward air, you'll see I mapped out everything in all the arts. You can kind of see what... Uh, what uh, what works when? What's the highest reward stuff that you can get? And you know, kind of kind of the idea that you have. And you notice if you go to Buster, Whoa. you go to Nair to grab at like mid percent devastating combos. Uh, <laughs> you can get a landing fair to turn off Buster forward smash at uh, above mid to high percent. You know, it's oh, sick. Nair to uh, wait. I put. Fair, I put Nair to grab. Let me rewrite that here. Fair to grab. Yeah, above like 20%, you get a you get a buster down. No, you get a buster down throw, and you already know you're getting like a dash attack or something like that at that percent. Yeah. Or a down Lord, forward so. tilt or some characters forward smash. You know, it's it's stupid. It's stupid. I need to. I I still mostly just do down throw forward tilt, uh, but I need to start 
figuring out when down tilt and uh, I'll look at the chart to make sure I know when down tilt or or uh, yeah. Uh, There's actually another chart better. in the table of contents that would be more useful for you there, uh, which is a Buster down throw combo chart. Ah. That would tell you specifically on what character and what percent range it would work. Remember we had that on uh, on Shulk 101. Uh yeah. yeah. I remember that. I actually had that on my phone. Rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so um, let's uh, I, I say let's uh, let's bar again, and um, yeah, let's just do a two stock right now. Let's uh, see oh. if I notice anything else that we can uh, yeah. probably touch on. Let's go. <laughs> Bless me. Mistakes were made. No, they weren't. How comfortable do you feel using the dial, by the way? Um, when I'm knocked off stage, it's done. I prefer to. When I'm knocked off stage, I prefer to cycle, but uh, on stage, I'll do that. Okay. okay. I mean, it's not too bad, it's just you get access a little bit slower. Unless I'm already in hard. Because I like, don't want to like, screw up like, screw up everything. I feel that. <laughs> oh. Not a lot. Yeah, worth the shot. I was trying to grab ledge. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. I got through that pretty good. Uh, one thing in ultimate that I um that I need to work on is like. Uh, when to use rising and landing aerial? Because uh, like I know rising aerials in some some situations are good. I don't feel like I use them properly. I've been told that like normally when I spar with people, like like you, I pretty much like exclusively use landing aerials, which is yeah. Like, rising aerials. Okay, I'll tell you. So. I'll tell you this right now. So first off, before we say anything else, nair is broken because you can use it rising and it'll count as a landing. Reverse nair is stupid. It works as both. It's everything. It's everything you want in life. Especially like speed art. That's a rising aerial. And oh, okay. Alright, Shulk. Alright, like. <laughs> That's uh that first one's a rising aerial. And uh this is a falling aerial. It's beautiful. Best of both worlds. So, in general, if someone is jumping, oh think about um I, I get a lot of flack for uh we're pulling out the, the IRL Monado, but I'm gonna do that real quick. <laughs> so, think about let, it. Let me, let me take a look at this, this screen real quick. All right. Um, all right, there we go. So, depending on where you wanna swing, you wanna put your sword in a different place. Let's say you're fighting fabled uh, Diddy Kong here, right here. Lovely, uh, lovely little monkey. And he's staying low to the ground, right? If you throw out a forward air, sword swings up here, it's gonna take forever to come down here before he's able to hit you with whatever he wants. So, generally, if the monkey's up here, the opposite thing happens, where you can swing your sword and it's gonna hit him out of the air. Forward air is a fantastic anti air. Someone jumps and you can swing him out of the air. That's uh, that's generally the idea you want to have when you're uh, dealing with that kind of thing. Someone jumps, you swing them out of the air. Someone's on the ground, you hit them with a landing aerial. 
If you want to hit them with something that they can't react to, you could try a rising aerial as a mix-up. If you want to uh, try to catch someone with some, no, try to anticipate something with who's on the ground, you hit them with a mix-up. That's uh, that's the idea you generally want to have. Because mix-ups aren't the ideal situation you want to pull out. It's not always the correct option. But in general, if someone is jumping a lot, like you're fighting a Shulk who's always in the air, and you try hitting him with a Nair, you're an idiot because this thing swings behind you and swings forward. Even advancing your Nair, you're not exactly doing your best bet because you're hitting them very late. But if the guy's directly in front of you and you throw out an up tilt or a forward air, it's going to catch them exactly where they're going to be. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know the obvious one. Like if someone's jumping in front of you and stuff like that. Yeah, but like that's but that's like, exactly like the ideal situation to use a rising area. Someone's jumping yeah. in your face, you throw out a forward air. If you tr throw out an air, you're an idiot. <laughs> um, but I mean, there are times where doing this is effective against someone like that because like it covers both. You know, it covers all options and it per covers the perfect angle to cover some stuff. So like, uh, beyond that, like honestly. If you focus on horizontal position, you can just throw out a forward air and you don't have the character on the ground or in the air. And if you okay. land with it, then it's safe. If you do it rising, then it's going and they hit your shield, then there's going to be lag time and you're gonna get punished. Okay. Um so when would be like an example of situation for like whatever people like rising and slash man landing? Yeah. Like when would be an ideal situation? I can barely hear you. Can you speak up a bit? Oh sorry. When would be an ideal situation for uh, to like hit like a uh, rising slash land. Like, what, what, what would I be wanting to cover here? Just like in a way that I don't know they're going to. Or... You you got quiet all of a sudden. Oh, is this like someone approaching in a way that I don't know that they're going to approach? How they're going to approach or what? Well, if if someone's approaching in a way you don't know how they're going to approach, then generally the option you want to go for is play at a range where you can react. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that doesn't really go into uh, rising or falling aerials, uh, though generally you want to be safe, so a falling aerial would be safe. But okay. I would often, like, this is where retreating fairs shine. If someone's like, try to approach me in a funky way right now, from a range that I can react, like from across the stage. Uh, go, go to the opposite of the platform, and I'll say go. Oh, okay. Okay, go. I messed up, but I was gonna go for dash attack. Like, if you play grounded, you have access to your shield. If you don't play grounded, you have access to retreating forward airs, which are extremely safe. Or retreating back air, you can throw out the uh, back air, and in general, you can react. Or I can, like, block in anticipation of whatever you do, and if you throw out a grab and I react, no, and I anticipate it, then, you know, bad things happen. If you try being funky there, and I back up with a forward air, I'm generally going to be safe, but I'm going to be giving up stage control as a resource. That's the thing. By doing this, yeah. I'm giving up stage control. But that's okay, because if I succeed, then I get that stage control back. And more. I hit you. So generally, when you're fighting an opponent that's being super aggressive, you want to keep that range between you and them so that you can react to their approach. And if you want to be safe, you can do this. If you want to attack, no, you want to have your options more immediately, you can stay on the ground. It all depends okay. on where you think they're going to be attacking from. You make an initial guess, and you just opt for the situation. You know, like, for example, try it. if you approach me at this percent, and I retreat with a forward air, my god, I'm, t I'm too fast for my own good. But, like, you retreat with a forward air, I can start a combo off of that. Ah. So not only is it really safe, but I can get some good reward from it. Oops. <laughs> Um, one other thing I was, I've been struggling with, especially in this game, is opponents that you're, have, like, uh, You're eating your microphone now. Now this is the oh, opposite sorry. problem. <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to, get, like, find the same spot. Alright, uh, one thing I've been, uh, kind of struggling uh, in this game is against op uh, opponents that have good burst range that are kind of turtling. So, uh, I know that, like, to weave in and out of their unreactable zone or, like, try to do something to bait them to either drop their shield or go in for a grab if I notice them uh, dropping their shield. But, like, I often find myself just doing like 
aerials like right outside their range, or like either right on the tip, tip of their shield, or if they're burst range just a little bit away from that, just kind of like that. Yeah. And I, they usually just end up hitting me. Mm -hmm. Because that's the issue. If you do something Not predictable correct. in their range, you're going to find the pattern they're going to break through. Like you try to do that against me right now. Let's say I'm a speeder. Maybe if I was, uh, you know, not in lag, that dash attack would have hit, yeah. but you know, that's, that's the idea. Like, I see the pattern, or I can, like, run up and shield, and then up be out of shield uh, against an unsafe rising area. Um, things like that. Um, in general, if, um, if, if you're at a range, if you're doing something predictable at a range where I can kind of react to what you're doing, then I'm not going to feel threatened by you. You're, you're, if I don't move forward, I'm not going to get hit, and if you do move forward, you're putting yourself at risk. Okay. So what can I do to like not run half the like? Yeah, I know I'm getting information when I'm weaving in and out of your zone, but like, what can I do so I don't have to like run in and just or something? Well, get it's information. Like, hey, run in and grab. Or... Okay. It, it really is that simple. It's um like once you know what the opponent's going to do, like let's say uh let's say you're the, you're the sleeping beast, right? And uh, I'm trying to uh, find a way to get into your zone when I know you can whiff punish me terribly. I'm gonna walk forward, yeah. dash back. It's like I'm baiting the options that you're going for. I don't know what you're gonna do, so I'm gonna dash back. And if I dash back and you fully commit to trying to push into my zone, at that point, I can react to what you do. And I'm gonna be way back here. And then I react well, to what you do, and you know, I can repel the, sleep, the beast. So, so basically, it's just like going really non committal there and then. Dashing, doing committal, but doing committal the opposite direction, so that it's not, it's safer that way. Yeah. Because like I think before, what I would do is I would like dash in and dash out, which uh, is a little. It's more a big commitment. Than, yeah. Uh, in general, yeah. you want to approach on the ground, retreat in the air, or uh, retreat on the ground. Like just don't. Or just do that. An advancing aerial is very unsafe unless you go for a cross up, which is situationally unsafe. And if someone's like a sleeping beast. That can uh, that can kind of rush you down. You don't want to be close if you mess up. So nair maybe not no across a burial maybe not the best option. Um, so like I could do something like this, like make it look like I'm committing and then retreat at the last second. And depending on what they do, I gain information. And if they decided okay. to retreat as well, trying to bait my movement, and I did not commit to this, like let's say uh, let's say you're the, you're the beast right now, right? You're in the middle of the stage, right. I walk forward, and when I walk forward, you're going to retreat, anticipating my option. I cover that, I move in to cover that space afterwards. And then at that point, I'm slowly gaining stage control, and eventually you're going to be pushed to ledge. And if you're pushed to ledge, then you have to play my game. Because if so you... So basically the... I'm oh, sorry. If you keep retreating, you're going off stage. If you don't keep retreating... Then you have to contest me when I can react to you, which is exactly what I want someone who has good burst zone to no uh, good burst range to do. I want them to so act. No, sorry. Um, so basically, uh, like this would be good, like if I was like approaching something like like I have a, I have a lot of problems against like characters like Rob. Rob. Which, uh, well, I could say uh, uh, fighting Rob is a little different. Yeah, and Snake. Okay, fighting Rob is a little different uh, because. Rob's burst range isn't really that much. The only thing that he has, the main reason that we struggle in that matchup is because Shulk thrives in mid-range and Gyro kind of wins mid-range. Okay. So what we have to do in the Rob matchup is a little different. We have to take the Gyro. Once we take the Gyro, we win the matchup. Uh, what do we do with the Gyro? We make it so like, Rob doesn't have the gyro. Okay. Like we um, can we can do some scary stuff with gyro. Like I don't know if you've seen the clips like of me like killing a Rob at forty percent with Z drop Nair. Okay, so we basically. But beyond just, that, uh, like you could just throw the gyro up in the air and then Rob doesn't have the gyro anymore. You're playing in that mid range because Rob doesn't have gyro. He can't control the mid range. And once and we control mid range, we can we have big sword. Rob doesn't have anything besides laser, and we can react to that easy. Okay. So just play grounded, play safe, and wall him out. And then control Gyro. If he doesn't have Gyro, you win the game. And if he oh, doesn't, if he gets conditioned to not use Gyro, then you win the game as well. You know? 
Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Snake is a little different. Um, Snake does have a big burst zone thanks to his dash attack. But yeah. if, if you poke the sleeping beast, Snake goes for a dash attack, you step back, that's a free punish. Okay, and if I do it using the walking thing rather than the dash again, I can just react. Exactly, and like he can't like throw a, a grenade at you with you not being able to block it because you have instant access to your shield button. You think he's going to dash attack, you don't have enough time to get away, you can block. Like, what's he okay. gonna do? Lumbering, uh, lumbering shield art dash into you and, and grab you? Yeah. Like, he's super, his run speed is super slow. It's his dash attack that's fast. Okay. You don't really need to be afraid yeah. of it. So basically, run in if Snake is holding, like, you can run in on him if he's holding a grenade because then he can't really, he doesn't have access to the dash attack or anything or tilts or anything like that. Yeah. But, uh, but if he's not holding a grenade, walking in is probably a lot better, assuming there's no grenades in the way. Yeah. Like, if the fastest that he can uh, do anything with grenade is block to drop grenade and then drop shield and dash attack. That's like 11 frames. No, more, because you can't drop shield immediately. You're locked in the shield for a bit before you can drop, and then there's 11 frames, and then the dash attack comes out. Dash attack is not exactly very fast. So, like, he has even, like, up smash out of shield. Yeah, if, if he pulls out a though. grenade and pulls out shield, like, you don't have to fear the dash attack because you can react to it. Alright. The moment he drops shield, anticipate the dash attack. Let me see what his frame data is on the dash attack, real quick. Snake. Dash attack. Five frame startup. And active until frame 12. So it's pretty fast. But if he has to drop shield first, and you're at a range that you can react, that's frame 11 plus 5, frame 16. Unreactable is, uh, no, you react in about frame 20. So just make sure you have some space between you and him, and you'll be fine. Just, like, you dash back. Or shield and punish because, like, honestly, from this range, the only thing that he can threaten you with is a dash attack or throwing a grenade. And he has to pick up the grenade before he can throw it, you know? Okay. And even then, if he throws a grenade and it's not cooked, it's it's not a threat. Yeah. We just run through it or grab it and throw it back. Exactly. Alright. Um, Let me see what else we need to talk about. Uh, so you said execution was a weakness. Um, that's not something we can really cover, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's something you gotta practice on your own. Uh, Smash 4 Autopilot. The more you play Ultimate, the, the better you'll be... No, the more you play Ultimate and the more you understand the way that Shulk plays, the uh, better you'll be at that. Adapting quickly under pressure, the more comfortable you are with playing Smash Ultimate, the easier that'll be. Because I know you can adapt under pressure in 4, right? Um, I, th I, th I feel like I was kind of okay at that, like I could, but there were some situations where it still took me long to, longer to adapt, like if I was fight okay. Luis or something like that, he would always adapt way, way quicker than me, and uh, I'd blow a game that I was about to win, like, I, 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 I've been last in Luis in Smash 4, like, five different times. Okay. And it was, I never got it. What I can say about <laughs> adapting is, uh, the whole, um, you remember the whole rock, paper, scissors of play styles that I, uh, that I made way back in the day? Yeah. That's an adapting tool. That's what I use to adapt in neutral. Um, beyond that, if I notice that I'm fault, no, that something isn't working, like I keep, get, I keep losing or like I lose a stock, something is changing, the guy's making a comeback, I immediately think, what? changed what is he doing different let's reevaluate the match and then i think about the whole play style thing again it's like okay he's playing more passively now he's baiting out my options uh so i'm going to poke the sleeping giant you know okay um or let's say he's uh he's hitting me out of the air a lot that i have this habit so I realize I have the habit now. How do I fix a habit in the middle of the match? Well, I give myself something else to do. So, like, instead of jumping at ledge out of shield, I'm going to keep holding shield. Or I'm going to roll in. Or, you know, things like that. Okay. Um, if you're, for example, getting overwhelmed, what do you usually do to, like, slow down the pace of the match if, for example, shield art is not an option? 
if shield art is not an option and I'm getting overwhelmed, I yeah. will generally try to make space between myself and my opponent and uh, keep them on arms less with safe options. If I'm not able to pull them off of me, then I'll try to find a way to go get to the ground and have access to my defensive options. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, like, my general... I think this is kind of more like when I'm getting overwhelmed and I like, need time to think. Uh, like, my general autopilot, I guess, options is to spam safe arrows, and, but that obviously has a good pattern in that. Yeah, if you uh, spam safe arrows in someone's face, you're going to get bucked. Okay. Like, it's yeah. not, it, we're not like other characters with safe aerials that can attack immediately after the aerial. That's what makes a lot of safe aerials really strong for other characters. Like, Wolf, for example, lands with an air and then immediately pulls out another thing. Or Inkling lands with a back air and then throws out another, has a possibility of throwing out another back air. Or throwing out, like, a jab that gets a lot of high reward. Or grabbing you if you stay in shield, things like that. Okay. We don't have so that. I guess that's for the most that's part. probably where the instinct comes from is like playing other characters that it, uh, they can just spam aerials or something like that. I mean, we can throw out another aerial if we think that they're going to, for example, Nerd. jump, but like, think about it. Our fa no, regardless of what aerial we use, we're still going to be minus. Even a Buster Nair, which is minus one on shield, gives them enough time to, to shield before we yeah. can do anything. And considering that our fastest option is frame five, like, <laughs> they got plenty of time. They got plenty of time to do whatever the hell they want. So, right. at that point, we have to recognize what are the possibilities of what, can, what they can do. What have they done before? And, you know, you can uh, you can learn that. You can uh, recognize what they've done, what they're going to do, what they might do, and then just adjust to it. And that same thing applies in reverse. If someone's spamming safe arrows on your shield, you can, like, if, they th if you think they're going to attack again, you can keep holding shield. If you think that they're going to uh, try to catch you on the ground, then you can jump away, you know? Okay. It's free. This is an um, easy game. This is an easy game. <laughs> it feels so much harder than Smash 4, though. It's an easy game. Smash Bro Compare this game to, like, other games where you gotta, like, learn all the technical stuff and you make one mistake and you get blown the hell up. Smash Bros. is an easy game. Alright. You gotta think of it as an easy game. Even if it's sometimes it's not an easy game, and like an easy game gives people so much more time to think about all the intricacies, but like it's execution should never be a problem. Okay, uh, I guess I need to work on execution and stuff. Just uh, um, execution and awareness okay. are things that How we have to do. How do you usually practice combos? It's like a normal, not combos, but like just any sort of strings or follow ups. Because like the problem is that obviously I don't have my Switch hacked, so I can't use the training pack like I did in Smash 4. Well, um, what I would say is, um, I generally practiced um, setting up the exact situation that I needed to work on. So like if there's a specific part of the follow-up that I'm messing up, then I would work on that part of the follow-up, whether or not there's DI or anything involved. I would just practice that specific input. Um, if I need to cover a specific DI, I would use like a, or specific options, I would use a turbo controller and like hold oh, out the stick in a certain those. direction. Okay. Or, um, you know, things like that. But it's essentially, I isolate the problem, and I then I try applying it in context. Same thing applies okay, to anything. Kind of, yeah, yeah. First one. Um, but yeah, cool. Um, is there anything else that I feel like you want to mention about, like, Smash Ultimate Shell? Because it looks like we're kind of running low on time, I guess. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I think we covered just about everything. Uh, let, let's, let me go down the list. So, Nair is really good. Fair has combo starters that, uh, we, that we didn't have before, and it hits forward. Uh, down yeah. air can be used to pressure shields very effectively. Thanks a lot for the follow, by the way. Uh, is that Honor? Honor? Either way, much appreciated. And Iraz had much appreciated as well for the follow 60 minutes ago. So, um, down air is a shield, it can be used as a shield pressure tool, you can uh, break shields with it almost, and you can combo off of it too in Buster Art, you can get stupid damage off of that. Um, up air is kind of sort of the same it was in Smash 4. Um, it doesn't kill as early as but... <laughs> I don't know about that dude. You go higher now in Jump Art. You get a up air to up no you like let me let me show you something a little a little devastating real quick okay 
I just miss being able to kill like lightweights at 60. Oh yeah, no, we no longer have up throw up air unless they jump. <laughs> yeah. If if they if they like to jump out of up throw, then they die. But beyond oh, that, okay. uh, let me raise your percent real quick. Yeah, just a little bit more. Okay, now uh, come over here, stand here, at ledge. If you're trying to cover me, let's see if I can get this right on my first try. Or whatever. You get the idea. Like that in jump part, you would have died. Oh and shit! Imagine okay. you do that from ledge. Oh yeah, basically like they'll uh, like what what would they try to be covering? I guess. Like they, I guess they. You you could like you know when you, the situations where you would do like down air off ledge to scoop someone off. Oh yeah, so that would work too. Uh, that would work too. Um, beyond that, if they uh, like if they're shielding at ledge and you want to pressure their shield, sometimes because it's not a true block string, they'll drop shield after the second hit, not after the first hit. They'll get hit by okay. the second hit, and then you hit them with the second hit. They'll be facing and you kill them. that way, so they will cross them up as well. Mm -hmm. And it's safe on shield. Okay. Like how how minus is, how uh, how minus is that on shield real quick? Let me look that up. Up air is minus five on shield. No way they're punishing that. That's not bad. <laughs> uh, unless you're like Doc or Mario. Yeah, you can like up B, but like beyond that, not happening. Especially crossed up. Especially crossed yeah. up. Alright, I'm gonna definitely use that. Because like a shielding, of, uh, shielding on like opponent. Yeah. But... yeah. But, uh, it, it definitely needs a little bit of practice, but like. If if you put in a, your uh, your character on ledge and then just practice doing that for a while, you can get a kill off of that. That's it's so stupid. Beyond that, uh, let's see. We talked about down tilt and how beautiful it is as a spacing tool. Uh, definitely work on your pivots and acting out of your pivots. Turn around dash no turn around forward tilt is a solid uh, kill option. Especially if you're in speed art, like you can just like dash across the stage and do that before they can react and just bat about a swing and they're dead. Uh, yeah, dash attack wait. is safer. I'm doing that right, right? Or is there a better no, no, no. way to do it? It's run, turn around. Oh! Is that quicker? That's quicker. It's not quicker, it just it makes you slide. Oh, okay. So you get more distance. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. So it's like, you can, uh, you can hit people from a farther range than it looks like you can hit them. Okay, so that's... That's why it's a good option. I kept trying to do it, and I'm like, and I keep, and, and it just never worked for me. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. That's cool. All right. Um, Let's see what else. Um, so. Also, being able to Am act. Am I doing back row? Yeah, it's a, it's a definitely slower than a perfect pivot bit down tilt would be in Smash Four, but you can get some stuff. I recommend practicing this, like turn around, no, dash back, turn around. Uh, you have tap jump off, right? Yeah. Try a uh, dash back, and then press up and towards the direction you, you need to face. Okay. Oh, okay. If you do that skid oh, animation, get that walking by accident. If you do if you do that skid animation, then you held forward for too long. There you go. So it just needs a bit, a bit of practice. Just uh, yeah. tap forward and then turn around. Very gentle. You can get a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of good positioning with that. It's this very safe way to position yourself and do that thing. And then you uh, you mix it in with this uh, or that or uh, this. Like you can like just get someone off guard, especially in speed art. Like you walk forward and then do that. That's nasty. You put someone off stage, and then like you get you get follow ups off of that. Um, beyond that, let's see what else is there. Um, oh, B is busted. You can still scoop people off of the ledge. It's no longer affected by yeah. rage. That's one thing I still do. Mm -hmm. um, I have a chart on that table of contents page that I linked earlier uh, that shows all the characters it works on. Um, what else, what else, what else? Backslash. It's not as effective at catching people on platforms. 
It's like it needs to be. Here. Oh, was it? It still works. Was it different in Smash 4 for attacking people on platforms? So... You didn't. Uh, it, it it had a different like uh, different hitbox, I think. Um, but it was uh, it was a little more reliable because you could. Uh, it was always fixed. You always knew exactly where it was going. Oh, but this one you can. This one you can angle. Wait, for better or worse. Here, stay, stay on the platform for a second. Hold chill. That's delicious. If you can cast someone off guard with that, break their shield. That's wow. Times. Okay. That yeah, works in Smash 4. Definitely something you do. And, so, and, and that's still what somewhat reliable in this game. Yeah. It's pretty. Like, if you hit the back of their shield, like, they're not going to be able to punish that. Also, dial right. storage. Let's talk briefly about dial oh, storage. No. Okay. It's a lot easier than it sounds. I actually made a guide. Right. It's like a one minute long guide that shows how to do everything like that. So essentially, it's like, don't think of it as a hard tech. It's not a hard tech. So how it works. When you hold the B button, you glow, right? You glow long enough, dial comes out. That's This is charging. The glowing is charging the dial. Yeah. If you hold B and let go or otherwise get interrupted before the dial comes out, then the charge will be retained. You don't have to cancel it with a jab. You can just let go. You don't have to use an input. You can just let go. And that charge gets retained indefinitely. If you use the dial in idle, like whether you're in the ground or in landing lag or whatever, then it'll reset and you'll go back to nothing. But I, I think I oh oops I, I think I keep getting I think cycling when I cycling is fine if you cycle you're still charging the dial. Wait really? Yes. I didn't know that. It do, it doesn't matter what you do you don't have to interrupt it you just you just so long as you release B before it fully charges or you like you interrupt the charge before it fully charges it'll be stored. And then, if you want to use that storage, you buffer the dial out of an action where you can't dial. It's that simple. That's that's it. That's the entire technique. Okay. Uh -huh. So like, press B, like that, you have it charged. It's charged. I, I do? Yeah. Okay. And then you hold the B button during an action, and you'll buffer it, and there you go. Dial storage. Boom. You're that done. Dial storage. That's it. That's it. That's the technique. You got it. You did it. Okay, so for art switching, like let's let's just say like there's one thing that I always really wanted to, uh, uh, my, one of my favorite things to do in Smash Four was to do the uh, Malak on hit and uh, uh, and then use the iframes to post dodge. Uh, with that, I know that you can do that with dial storage, but like I'm not sure like like usually I feel like I don't let go of the stick quick enough or something. So I practice. It's not a matter of letting go of the stick; it's a matter of letting go of the B button. If you like, okay. if if you're holding the thing, you let go of the stick. Boom, you're back to neutral. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, so I can I can I can let the stick. Uh, I can I can keep the edge just but I like all the B button. Yeah. The what you have to worry about is if you let the stick go too early, because one thing that could possibly happen is if you have a controller with a lot of recoil, and you let go of the stick after you release the B button. You could end up inadvertently switching to the wrong art. So like, you okay. could be so trying to switch to jump, and you get Buster instead because you let go of the stake too early. Or you could be trying to switch okay. even worse. You're trying to switch to speed to recover and you switch to shield. That's Damn. the worst one. I think I got that once. Yeah, if you have a stick, you have, you have something with a lot of recoil, you really gotta watch out for that. Um, okay. That's because like during those last few frames, oh, after you release B, it doesn't activate immediately. There's still like a four frame window where you can change the art that you pick. It activates on frame four. So if you're switched to Buster, you let go of the stick, and, or let's say you switch to speed, you let go of the stick, and I mean you let go of the button, and on the last frame possible you, you move to shield, you're gonna get shield art. Okay. Um, but for, like, if I want to pose dodge, I don't really worry about that. Okay. If you want, yeah, if you want to pose dodge, it doesn't matter what art you go into, but it's just a matter of being able to switch arts. If you have, like, the full 10 frames, because, like, you can kind of eyeball how long 10 frames is. You can kind of eyeball a six of a second. Yeah, with enough practice. And then you throw it out, like, I hit you, and then I'm holding the B button, um, 
while I'm hitting you, and then, you know? Let me see. Is there a way to... Is there a way to, um... Like to that. Do, oh, hello. Um, and then, it, it, for example, let's pretend that was in bracket. You just do that, then buffer deactivate, then fair. Is that true? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a down throw fair is not a true combo at that percent. But I meant like in the situation when you hit me with buster fair. Like if you just buffer deactivate there, you can. That's yeah, true I can buffer deactivate okay. and uh, like hit you with another fair or something like that. It's not a true combo, but it'll catch people off guard. And if I catch a jump, you're dead. Oh, so buster fair into regular fair isn't, isn't true? Oh, no. Regular fair into okay. regular fair is barely true. Okay. Um. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, it's it's yeah, true at like to... super high percent, not at that percent. Yeah, I guess I'll look at your doc for that. Um, so is there a way to just charge the bow without like cycling that? Yes, if you're in an art. Oh. Also, even if, if you're not in an art, you can you can interrupt and you can find safe places to interrupt. Like for example, you can start holding the dial like ten frames before you throw in an attack. Naturally, you don't have to like jab to commit to it. You could like for example, let's say you're going to to space a, a retreating fair. You could like do that and like let go of the button before you land. There you go. It's stored. Okay. There's many ways to safely store. You can do it. Uh, in so many different places. Like, uh, I'm gonna link you a one-minute guide that I made. It's a little fast, so you might have to pause it a few times. It's in the guide. No, it's in the, uh... It's in the table of contents thing. But I'm gonna link it to you directly so you can take a look. I show several examples of when it can be used and how to prepare it safely. I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the stream as well, so you guys can take a look. Um, so let's see, um, we're pretty much out of time by the way, so, uh, I mean, I can, I can just bump the price up, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal, I uh, appreciate it. um, so, uh, so basically, like, oh god, I forgot what I was gonna, uh, it has to do with dial storage, oh yeah, what's the, so, I'm, I'm, I'm basically probably gonna use dial storage mostly for post dodging, uh, what's like the biggest thing aside from that? To well, I, I will tell you if you use it for pose dodging, you have to keep in mind that you can't do it immediately. There's going to be a bit of delay on that. It's not as fast as a milk. Oh, okay, dang. If you milk, it will come out when the art activates, which can be on the first frame of landing lag. But if you bring out the dial, remember there's one frame of dial, and then there's if you release it, like, frame perfect, then there's one, two, three frames of lag, and then fourth frame it activates. That's frame perfect, four frames of lag. Oh, rip. Okay, I might... I'll see if I can get that to work. So, it, it can be useful, situationally. Uh, Malk is still better in those situations for pose dodging, but in, in general, it's, it's just another option. There's times that it's going to be better, because you can do it on reaction with dial storage. And also, you can okay, do yeah. stuff like, uh, like for example, let's say you have the dial charged, and then you, uh, let's see, uh, directional air dodge, and then like you could switch arts out of that, you know? Oh, like, on reaction? Okay, that's sick. Yeah. Okay, so basically... And also, you uh, don't basically. need to switch arts to cancel landing lag. You're bringing up the dial cancels landing lag. It's a little slower, like, there's gonna be seven frames of lag, but with that one, you don't have to be frame perfect. There's like three to four frames of leeway, something like that. I think it's three frames of leeway. Uh, that you can release it, and it'll come out, like, as if it was frame perfect. So you could, like, uh, do that, and then, like, you know? You can even flash it faster than that. Hukur can't wait till uh, they nerf Shulk Shield out when it hits them. They're not going to. It's a tool tip. <laughs> They're yeah, not I mean, going it's, to. It's, it's a tip in the game. So I mean... Shulk could do that in canon. He changes oh, the future, yeah. alright? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the closest thing we get to changing the future, because we can't actually... Um... The future doesn't belong to you, alright? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh... So yeah, aside from 
So canceling landing lag with air dodges, canceling. We can do the canceling landing lag from hit stun thing too quicker with dial storage. So I, I, when it comes to hit stun, uh, dial storage, out of hit stun, and then multi hits, I kind of heard conflicting information. And well, some people say, okay. oh, it doesn't matter, like, dial stun stun. But I've heard from others, it's like, oh no, you can't use it in hit stun because, uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the whole, because like, I know, like, stuff like Inkling Up Smash, can you actually, like, dial storage out of Uh, yes. Sort of. Um, so, like, you're talking about, like, Inkling grounds you with Roller and then you Up Smash? Yeah. So long as there are, um, let's say, uh, with dial storage, so long as there's four frames between hits, including lag time, no, including hit lag, you can you can switch cards. Dial storage is broken. Okay. I I heard. Uh, my understanding of it before was that that with, when it comes to dial storage, um, like you could only do it. During situations where you normally couldn't dial, so it's like in hits and you can dial. Yes, so yes, why exactly. You're right. But when talking specifically about inkling up smash out of roller, you can't dial while grounded. Oh, grounded. Okay. Also, you can't dial while being grabbed. So any grab combos you can dial storage out of. Um, if you f let's say you forward air into someone like. You have dial storage, and you have your dial stored, and then you forward air into someone, and they intercept you out of the air. Like hit me with like an up tilt when I go for a forward air, right? I was holding it during the forward air, and then I got hit. Dial oh, storage activated. So you can get it immediately. Exactly. You can use it as a backup plan to keep yourself safe. Like his characters have like really quick multi hits, and is that how Komi escaped the uh, Masashi's death smash? He just normally switched to to bow. Like that really famous clip where uh, where Komi gets his shield broken, and then uh, Masashi tries to F fully charge F smash, and Komi just kills him. I don't know if that was dial storage because he could do that without dial storage. He could just do oh, okay. that. He's broken. But um, let me let me show you an example. I'm gonna actually play the video on stream so you guys can. Uh, Enjoy it real quick. Let's see YouTube capture. Can't wait till no no you wild buffing our, buffing our scent. People will riot. People would straight up riot. I mean we'd probably be fine. We'd be fine, <laughs> but people would riot. I love how we're like, like, Shulk and Bayor are like the two characters that have answers to magic words on ledge. <laughs> I think Bayo only has certain percent. No, please stop until I stop the music, please. Goddamn. Don't oh, lag on my me. My bad. No, not you, not you. Not oh, you. Okay. You're good, you're good. I'm talking about... <laughs> slash. Goddamn. Oh god. Okay, uh... I'm gonna need to make this a little bit smaller. Yeah, okay, that's good. So we're gonna we're gonna watch this video on stream real quick so you guys can kind of see more or less all the examples. Uh, feel free to watch the video on your own screen. It's a little fast. But I, I essentially go over several, uh, like how to do it at first, which we already uh, explained on stream. It goes a little fast, but whatever. There's a lot of examples here and there, and some of these uh, examples are, I want you to look at, so you can kind of get some ideas how to do it. All right. Uh -oh. You can charge it raw. You can just do it. You can switch arts and immediately press B. You can hold B a little longer when deactivating. You can hold B before attacking. And then here's some of the uses. By the way, I wrote this song. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember you posting about it in the uh, uh, Discord about the song. So. All 
Okay. I actually did not put it up on stream. I'm an idiot. Oh, I really like that Rob thing. The... The, yeah. the up the, the up air? you you you're ready for the up air. I'm gonna Can you not normally switch to shield in the up air. I'm gonna link it in the chat because I forgot to actually play it on stream and I don't wanna watch it again. But uh <laughs> my bad. My bad. Uh what were you saying? Do you know? Can you not normally uh, shield art out of Rob up air, or is you it just can like a, is normally it? shield art out of up air? It's just uh, it would be a little slower because you can't dial storage out of it. Oh, okay. So that's that's the reason why I I do it there to kind of demonstrate like it doesn't matter what what's happening there. Like I, I kept myself safe. I used uh, okay. I used a forward air while holding B, and then regardless of what happened, I switched. I was able to switch to shield if I got hit. And then immediately switch the buff for the buster to punish. Okay, so like, um, if, if you and even if you don't have the dial sword, this is still really, really, uh, like just in case you like think they're gonna interrupt what you're doing, and then, yeah, they, exactly. and then you, you just immediately switch to shield. Well, not it's just if you if you have the dial sword, you can be holding B while doing the attack, and if your attack is interrupted, then you dial. Okay. And I've noticed when it comes to multi hits, uh, some will automatically like let go of the dial. Like for example, if I'm like in Bayo and I just hold the control stick down and hold B, like she'll automatically like it'll automatically dial. Yeah, uh, let, let me show you something. Like I'm gonna be holding the button, right? And I want you, to, I want you to hit me with downer, and I want you to see what happens. You see how the dial closed and reopened? Yeah. If I am holding an art, and you do this. The R will activate. Okay. So if you're holding a direction, that any type of hit zone? that's any type of hit. Anything that interrupts when the dial is already fully open, like you could like down tilt me and it'll happen. Oh. And a multi hit move, which is non tumble hit stun, is the same thing. Like you could jab me and it'll happen. Hold on, do it. Do it one more time. I actually want to experiment. Experiment with this. Uh, no, raise my percent, raise my percent. Uh, we gotta, we gotta redo the time. I think it's six seconds left. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. But like, I'm holding, okay, uh, it's forward smash for me right now. I switched to armor for the see. forward smash and I still died, but you get the <laughs> idea. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, if you had dial... Wait, yeah, if you control forward smash with dial swords, could you... Uh... Mm, no, 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 that was something else. That was that was because okay. getting hit in... Getting hit interrupted dial, interrupting the dial made the dial activate. Okay. So basically, interrupting the dial can make it activate even in multi-hit. So like, in, if you got, like, fully charged shulk forward smash and smash hurt, you could still switch exactly. to shield for the second hit. Exactly. That is... Pretty cool. I didn't know that. Like, do it, do it right now. Fully charge uh, right now. You'll see. I go nowhere. Uh, Even in vanilla. Do a bit of I'll be in Smash Art. I'll be in Smash Art. What? Shulk busted. Because <laughs> <laughs> it oh activates frame one of hit lag. That because is that's nuts. the thing. When you switch arts normally. There's like that four frame window of delay that I mentioned when you release the button and it's like three frames and then it activates. But when you get hit, you're in hit stun. When you're in hit stun, that window of opportunity doesn't happen. It just activates instantly. Oh, okay. So it's frame perfect. It's frame one. It's not frame perfect, wrong word. It's frame one. Okay, and it happens uh, during hit lag. Not during hit stun, hit lag. Oh, so like nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. Unless you're like double. <laughs> yeah, no, not like, not even. Because frame one it happens. If I get yeah. hit on the exact same frame, then the attacks will clank anyways, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's broken. You hold the B button like you think gonna, something's gonna happen, you just hold that. They hit you. I don't, I don't give a, I don't give a, I don't give a damn. I don't give a hoot. That's so crazy. <laughs> you know? Now I know why I died in some situations. 
Because like I switched to an art where I didn't realize I just, I'm like, why did I switch here? Yeah. That makes sense. I'm like, I'm holding B, and that's how that's why in like an air slash. You're getting quiet. You switch to an art. Oh, I said that's why interrupting air slash makes you switch, switch to an art. Yeah, exactly. Sense. And I mean, now you're pick- oh, oh, wait, one second. I was looking at the wrong thing. I wasn't looking at your stream, I was looking at your video. There we go. Um, but yeah, sweet. Um, that's sick. I did not know about that. <laughs> Shulk broken, dude. Shulk straight oh, broken. Shit. Yeah, like, also, exactly things like bad. this. Wait. So, if, for example, like, I can just, like, if I'm expecting someone to hit me, like, tank the hit, and then, like, counter them. Like, yeah, no, you're thinking too small. Them. You're thinking too small. Uh, I want you to, like, uh, hit me with a jab chain right now. Okay. Imagine, I'm, imagine you're playing a character, you're fighting a character with a weaker jab like that. And then, so... so I, like, I hold shield... And then switch to smash before I get when I get launched. Hold on, let me let me reset percent. Let's see how far I go if I switch to shield early. Do it. Uh, you I can see where that goes. goes. Yeah, but oh, sick. So, um, okay, so that's how that's how they are able to get it. Just all been doing a couple of uh, yeah. That's a like that's so a technique just... we call double dial. Okay. Switch and... to shield. Tank a hit, switch to smash, kill him big. Okay, but if, if I'm already in the jab, then I can't. Uh, you can switch to I shield. Like. But can I still double dial like that if I'm already in the jab? Depend on the jab. Okay. Like, like if you get a hit in a rapid jab, you switch to shield very early on, and then you switch to, then you hold smash at the end. When you think it's gonna be released, while kind of STIing okay. out, you no, know, while kind of like preparing to get out, and then so long as you switch to smash during hit stun, like while you're getting sent back, it'll activate instantly. But if you're do doing that, no, 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 I'm, I'm not talking about that. Like that, that's gonna happen like that. Yeah. But like you don't, you don't even have to have it ready like that. You could like switch to shield, react to being released. And with then smash and hit stun. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because there's hit lag, and you charge when you hold the B button and you're charging the dial. You charge during hit lag as well. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh, I was just during. Oops. Like um. Shulk's dial charge is so weird in this game because it works regardless of whatever else is happening. It works if you, if you're. It works if your time is if you're slowed down. You get witch timed, you can still dial the same way you could dial. Oh yeah, regardless. No, I, that's like one of the first things I did in the in, when the game came out. It was fun. Yeah, or like it actually screws us up because we can't train in like slowed down time in training mode. Oh yeah. But um, it also means we destroy bayonetta, so who cares? <laughs> Yeah, uh, my main training partner is Bayonetta, so... And, like, timer? <laughs> no, someone tr hit, gets a timer in, like, item battles? Oh, no, whatever shall I do? <laughs> it's like, oh, shield. Rip. No, not even, because, like, the pose dodge oh, is 14 just... frames stretched out. <laughs> yeah, and then you can just switch, and then you can... If the pose dodge goes to shield, they just can't kill you. Exactly. If someone starts um, charging a multi-hit forward smash, you do this in shield art. <laughs> no, you do this preparing to switch to shield art to hit you with the first hit, and then you just tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That is cool. Um, what about, uh, so like, we, we, sorry, one more clarification for Rapid Jab. Sorry if this is a dumb question. Um, uh, so with the Rapid Jab, uh, I have to, do I have to press and hold the direction before the last hit connects, or can I do it after the last hit connects? I think, I, I'm not 100% sure. We can test it if you want. I can pull out Inkling. Okay. Or wouldn't it be better if I used a, like, box or something like that, because better, more... Well, uh, I mean, Inkling's like the, uh... We, we can try it with Fox, uh, but I think uh, in, in, I know it works with Inkling. 
I mean, like, I could, I mean, I meant, like, I could be Inkling or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, than, yeah, go for it. Because, like, you're better at doing all the buttons. Yeah, but you're the one who needs to, to learn it. Buttons. <laughs> I mean, I, I can learn it on my own time. All right. So, um, but I just need to know what the input is. Where is it? So yeah, if, you, if you're in the multi-hit, you'll automatically activate RC, you won't want to activate. So you have to kind of okay. react to the ending. The switch is so you can react to the ending, not predict it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let, let's try it right now, let's try it right now. Okay. You go yeah, react to only. Yeah, you go pretty much nowhere, so even if, like, you're a little late, so long as you activate it fast enough so you don't go into pose, because if you go into pose, it's not as fast as it was in Smash 4. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you, you can't react to it. So. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's that in Smash 4, you could act out oh, on frame you 6. Can't act. In this, this game, you act out on frame 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I need frame data in this game. <laughs> um, this dash dance is fun. Yeah, no, Inkling is so fun, dude. I love playing Inkling. I wish Inkling worked to cover one of my matchups. Oh, wait. It wore off. But yeah, that's, that's the mix-up. Like, if an Inkling thinks that you're gonna go for the double dial, then they can, like, keep holding jab. But at that point, yeah. you, like, SDI out and then punish him for free with whatever you want. You could charge okay. a forward smash at that point. And it'll hit him with a tip. Okay. So so it does so basically if they know it's gonna come, the, the counter plays just FBI out and then uh, attack him. Exactly. Like try it right now. Just keep holding it. I mean I don't I don't have the thing anymore, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get what you mean though. Yeah. But yeah, good times. Um what else is there? Um I think that's the bigger. I think I think that's covered most of it. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There has to be uh, dial storage. We did the down smash the... shield breaks. Oh yeah, no, I I, I got that. Um, actually, no, I, it, it's probably still. It's I've different it, in this game. I've done it in tournament, but uh, it'd probably be better to get like an explanation so I know exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I haven't really done too much experimenting with it either. I know other people have. Um, from what I've heard, if you think that your opponent is going to shield, you can like charge a down smash near them in Buster. And yeah. It's gonna get bamboozled. So like, let's say you're pressuring someone in Buster, and like, you pull out one of those, and like, you, you either get big damage or you know, you break your shield. Or if you think, uh, like you can like run up and get like a down smash in Buster. Yeah, normally I only really get the shield break when I get the back hit to hit their shield too. Yeah, in in uh in four it was the same way for me. Like I would like position myself right here so that uh, when they like neutral got up at the shield, yeah, they would get caught stay. by it. Um, but yeah, I actually made it on each smash by uh. uh down, fully charged down, not fully charged, down smashing, breaking an inkling shield, and then fully charged forward smash, pulling the 20 to win the set, and I was at like 150. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. And I was 150 last thought. That's what I want to hear. Uh, let's see. Um... This, sadly, not as good anymore. I've gotten it. I, I mean, I it works, it works, but there's one big problem with it. That's a thing now. Yeah. Get up attack is now invincible until they used to catch get up attack, right? Yeah, you used to catch get up attack. Now it doesn't. Which is good. It's a, it's a buff to ledge options, and at the same time a nerf because if you re grab, then it w then up smash will work. Okay. I mean, if they re grab, I think I'm just gonna go for air slash anyway. But... It depends on the character. I guess yeah, that makes sense. 
But yeah, uh, beyond that, I think that's pretty much all of the main things. I can tell you was like for Frayer, it's the same thing that it was in Smash 4. If you want to combo fair to fair, you want to generally aim for low fair to high fair. Okay, so low, low fair to high fair. Yeah, it was just on the border of being a true combo. Okay. So like, sometimes you want to like, you want to like fast fall after the after the first fair, so that the first fair, the second fair will connect okay. high. Okay, that makes sense. Um. I think I can do that intuitively, I just can't do it off command. Like, I know I've done it before in bracket. Yeah. But, um, and, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Random yeah. ultimate thing for every character, though. How about this? Wave landing. What's the... Just like regular, just like do that. Repositioning. It's quick repositioning. If you're realizing that you're not... Uh, that the position you're landing on is not a good position, you can adjust yourself. If you're re okay. recognizing someone's covering you in a combo, you can like use their momentum against them by air dodging into them. If uh, you're trying to recover back to stage, you can air dodge back to the ledge as a mix-up. Essentially, you know how people like kind of go backwards to cover when you hold forward? If you yeah. go back to ledge, you're safe. You could also okay. like bait like someone to cover a ledge jump and then air dodge down onto the stage. Um, you could also use it as an alternative recovery. I need that. I, I, I know I should do that. What about like the does the melee style what sliding wave land? Is that useful at all? I see some people do it, but like I'm not sure. Like, the one where you like do it on platforms or something. Or even like something like this. Yeah, something like that. I see people do that. Yeah. I mean, I for Shulk, it might be useful because we can cancel landing lag. We can like oh, shit, do yeah. this into dial. <laughs> Then... Okay. Yeah, I think I saw like the one where it's like they do that on the platform and grab or something. I can tell you this is an option. Like if you if you go like normally you can't run through someone, but you can air dodge through them. So just run air them. But push, like, like short this, air dodge you're dealing with like untouched technology. People don't do this. Okay. Hey, it's fun. Like I, I'm a short lane. I have to use untouched technology. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You gotta you gotta use the unoptimal stuff because that's the cool yeah. stuff. <laughs> also, um, this is this is an option to cross some people up. Oh, just like it depends on the character, but like some characters, especially the thinner ones, you can like run into them and spot dodge, and you'll cross them up. Okay, and like especially like if they have any sort of forward move, control, will uh, cross them up too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other ultimate things that are like in general character things that like not not necessarily short things, but like things that like. Uh, General like one thing I just started things. doing was like air dodging to reposition myself while landing. I still need to get in the habit of that because normally I just land normally, and then I actually lost the set to Sheik up some match because I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, but, like when uh, you see that things are happening like that. Uh, one thing that I can say that's kind of nerfed with Shulk is we don't really have much in the way of landing options from directly below because if you look at the mirror carefully, directly below us, the sword is not disjointed. Because our feet are there. Oh yeah. So if you try to, be... it's not there for as long either. Way, yeah, exactly. Hard. If you try to be ignorant and just like land on someone with that, you're going to get outranged. You're gonna get anti-air. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to hit someone with that, you have to do so from horizontally. Don't go direct. Don't land directly on them. Just do it from a do it from a horizontal position. Okay, so like basically if someone's like not respecting the fact that I have yeah. an option, I do Also, this is broken. Like, just Malk? Like, just jump fair Malk? Yeah, not not just fair. You can like, you can do this with air dodge. Yay! I actually have Malk to do now. I've been so... I've been so much. And you know what the best part is? You do it like as fast as possible, and check it in training mode. It'll usually come off frame perfect. Wow, I don't think I'll be able to frame perfect thing, but I really like the whole like jump fair uh, high frame thing because like they're probably like even if they feel it, they're gonna with a grab or something like that or with their permission then exactly because of the high frames. Mm -hmm. Like even if it's I not need, frame like, perfect. Write this... I'm gonna like download this mod and then, like write this shit down. Do it. <laughs> 
I'm probably gonna upload it on YouTube. Cause I need, uh, I need more, uh, I need footage so I can put out so people know, hey, guess what? Tremendo dude's doing lessons again! Hey! <laughs> hey, and if I make PR, you can be like, oh, look, you, uh... I, I can I can put PR you as one of the uh, what's what's that word when people put in the, the reviews for uh, for services done well? But you know what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, the critique, the the uh, I I put on the lesson banner. Uh, hey, I I got PR after a tremendo lesson. Give this do give this guy money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, get, yeah, get this guy money and help him out, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. I, uh, I learned a lot of stuff that I would not have figured out on my own. Both no game problem, knowledge man. as well as... Maybe I might have figured out a little bit of the game knowledge, but all the short stuff, like, I, I would not have figured that out. So uh, thank yeah. you very, very much. Anytime, uh, I don't have time to lab this, <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> this, this is, like, this is a perfect thing. Like, when you don't... <laughs> If you have time, if you have all the time in the world, and you can like spend all that time just like talking to someone, and, I mean you can spend all time like in the lab or meditating on this stuff. You can figure out all this stuff on your own, on your own. But if you need that jump start, you don't have that much time. This like it, this is exactly what lessons are for. You don't. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, let's see. Uh, when did we start? I think we um... started around. Uh, it was either at twelve fifty or one ten. I don't remember. Um, That's a big range. And then, well, um, let's just do what? Let's just do. It was. We started at. We started at one. We started at uh, one o'clock a.m. I'll, I'll just round up. Uh, so, how do I donate in Twitch? Do I donate through the stream, or do I? Yeah. Do I... Uh, just scroll down on the on the Twitch uh, thing, and you'll see the the donation button. I think it's still the shop with the eyes, with the money eyes. Okay. Uh, okay, the most shop with the money eyes, Twitch stream. Let's do that. Okay. Your username. Do I just like. Oh, do I have to log in? Or, oh, okay, I can log in. Do I log in with Twitch here? I don't think you need to log in. I think you just put in a username that you want to display on the stream. Oh, I, I logged in there, okay, so I understand. Oh, donate. Um, Thanks so much, by the way, man. To be 40 donation message and huh you're donating enough to use gifts uh i don't i don't like any of those gifts if okay, you really yeah. want to <laughs> in the meantime guys uh this lesson was done as a uh donation 20 dollars an hour as a donation incentive to help me get to switch fest you see the uh, the goal is right up here um, right now I have like $25, it's about to be uh, a lot more than that. Um, not to mention the uh, on the actual SwitchFest page, there's uh, someone that bought some stuff to uh, help me out and making it there, some charms and stuff, so there's another option to donate as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post it here, the donate button, there it is you beautiful bastard, thank you so much for the donation. <laughs> no problem. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the lesson. All right, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. No problem, man. Oh, there it is. I'm, it's delayed on my side. So. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to log off. Uh, probably download this later and take a look and take go, go back and really take notes. Uh, there's a couple of things here that I'm like, oh, I can probably implement this within a couple of days, but there's a couple of stuff I'm going to definitely work on like the outsource. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like the walking thing I'm going to do like tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the follow, DJ Crest. Much appreciated, man. Uh, woman, she, she's a girl. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one of my friends that I think was. Um, but so, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Thanks a lot for uh yeah, for the donation, man, and uh, keep it going, man. Anything happens, you need any questions answered, just hit me up. I uh, will. Will do. All right. All right. Later. Take care.